Brother Lou, won't you come? You're a friend. You don't really need much of an introduction. You've been with us many times, and we'll have great messages this week. Thanks. You met me. I'll never forget it. Yes. yes. You got your Bible this morning. I'm paying attention to the time. Don't need nothing, but I'm paying attention to it. Yes, Psalm chapter 31. I just need a verse to launch. I need, I, I, and, and I've got a lot of verses, and I hope you don't mind. I, I'll read a bunch of verses in our, in our, in the message of God will let me. I want to say some things about faith promise this morning. I, I, I believe faith promise is is a commitment you make to God. Uh, we've been talking about commitment. And the word commitment means to carry out. It means to give in trust. It means to put into the hands, power, and authority of another. It means to entrust, especially for safekeeping. It means to deposit. It means to do and effect. It means to settle in. It means to engage in the battle. Can, can, I, can I say tonight, or this morning, it is tonight somewhere. Um, it's tonight in Burma. I'm spiritually dyslexic. It's tonight, and tonight I'll say this morning, and you, you, you're used to me by now, I hope. And, but let me just say a word about faith promise. I, I've been listening to uh, uh, different people and, and all the different things, and uh, especially this morning when you were talking about some things, and about that little lady that kept just giving and giving and giving to orphanage. I got an orphanage in Burma, 64 orphans. Uh, we've had as high as 75, and as low as about 40. And, uh, and I thought about that little girl and, and, and that, that, that lady that just gave. And, and you know, the Bible says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's right. You know, when it comes to that little piece of paper, that little piece of paper, probably the ink is worth more than that little piece of paper. But that little piece of paper is an opportunity for you to make a difference. Yes, sir. And uh, we're going to talk a lot about that tonight if God will give me some liberty and some thought and some clarity. Uh, but we're going to talk this morning about commitment. But I thought about faith promise. Faith promise is not you promising God you will give it if God gives it to you. It is you promising to sacrifice and give up what you already possess and to live by faith, trusting in God's ability to meet your needs after you've given. God said I, 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 that, 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 that the children in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 they had, they had an ability, they had a power of their own. Everybody has something you can do. Everybody has something you can give. Right. Whether it's a nickel, dime, quarter. I've never seen anybody go so low. I'm surprised they didn't put a penny on there, but I guess it's not 1950s anymore. <laughs> and, uh, but but uh, faith promise giving is important. May I say, I, I believe that uh, somebody made this statement. Man, I wish it was me. And, but I heard it in a meeting in, in, in uh, New York area that I was preaching in a missions conference. And a missionary came in and he stood up and he gave his presentation and he made this statement. He said, a missions conference is a church business meeting to decide the fate of the heathen world. Yes, sir. I went, oh my, I'm sitting in the second row. I said, say that again. I couldn't write that down fast enough. A missions conference is a church business meeting to decide the fate of the heathen world. That's right. What a statement. What a statement. Somebody said that uh, when it, in a missions conference, C.T. Stubb, one of my, it's my favorite quote of all quotes. It's on the bottom of my prayer letter. The light that shines farthest must shine brightest at home. We must do what it takes to keep America burning brightly. Yes, we've sir. got to start churches. We've got to help churches. We've got to change. You're we've right. got to change neighborhoods. We've got to go in and reach them with the gospel. He said the light that shines farthest must shine brightest at home. Yes. May I say tonight, or yeah, it's tonight. It's tonight somewhere, I promise. <laughs> the faith promise offering is money God will give through you. That he might never have given to you if he saw that he could not trust you to pass it along. That's good. I know some of the poorest people 
that give and give and give. And, that, and, and we look at that and I go, how are they doing that? And God blesses them and blesses them. But can I just say, God wants, God wants to use you as a vessel. Yes. A.B. Simpson said the Christian is not obedient unless he's doing all in his power to send the gospel to the heathen world. Some great evangelist I know very, 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 very personally made this statement. The true greatness of the church is not measured in its seating capacity, but in its missionary sending compassion. Yes. God's looking to use a church. I, I just believe this generation of Christians, you and I, this generation of Christians is responsible for this generation of souls on earth. And it's our responsibility to get them the gospel. If you got your Bible this morning, I, I, I won't belabor any more cool points. I, I just, I love quotes. I, I collect them through the years. I, I read quotes. I got books on quotes. I love quotes. And uh, Psalm chapter 31, let's stand together out of respect for the, for the word of God. Psalm chapter 31, I want you to find verse, uh, uh, look at verse 22. Psalm chapter 31, or Psalm chapter 31, yes, in verse, 30, in verse 22, God says, for I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplication when I cried unto thee. Oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints. For the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. I draw your attention to verse 23. But the Bible says, Oh, love the Lord. All ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Let's, let, let's pray that you can have a seat. Heavenly Father, I pray this morning. The Holy Ghost of God, please. We need unction from on high. We need, we need that fire touch from on high. God, we need a, a Holy Ghost revival in, our, in my heart and in our hearts this morning. God, I'm asking you set angels around my mind and on my lips and teeth and tongue and help me to think and speak precisely what you'd have said this morning. Holy Ghost of God, give your people ears to hear and hearts to understand. Open and understand your word. God, give us a heart to want to know you that wants to be set on fire. Father, please have your will and way. Lord, I love you this morning, Jesus. Just simply hide me behind your cross. Yeah. Don't let them hear from me. God, may they please hear from you. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can have a seat at the world. We've talked about a lot of things this week. We've talked about having commitment. We've talked about being committed. We've talked about being committed to the scriptures and being committed to supplication and being committed to a sacrificial giving last night. And just, we've talked about being committed. May I say this morning? My, my message and my meaning and, and is, is on commitment. The very first time the word commitment is used in the word of God. The word commit is used in the word of God as thou shalt not commit adultery in Exodus chapter 20. And, and may I say, God uses the word commit 188 times in all of its forms, 188 times in 175 verses in, in your King James Bible. If God says something once, he's kind of serious about it. No, not kind of serious. Let me rephrase that. Let me make this, let me just, when God says something once, he is absolutely God serious about something. If he says something twice, he's not doing it because he's forgotten or has had an old age moment like I have. He's doing it for your benefit so that he wants you to know he's doubly serious about it. But if God uses a word 188 times in all of its different forms, in 175 verses, God is trying to grab your attention and say, Hey! I'm serious about this. Yes, sir. This morning, as I looked up the Word of God, I, I, and looked in the Word of God, and, and in, in December the 26th of last year, December the 26th, the day after Christmas, in my office on a Monday morning, as my grandchildren were at my house running around screaming and hollering, uh, uh, I was in my office, I'd read my Bible, I was drinking a cup of, uh, of hot coffee, and uh, had a little heater on because my house was cold, because my grandchildren come in and they take their shoes and their socks off, they think it's summertime, 
24 7 365 days a year at my house so my wife uh we but they're, they're always hot so they my house is cool and uh, it, it, he, heating oil is expensive so i keep it cool you come in my house bring a sweater and uh but uh my grandchildren run around, I'm praying and reading my Bible, saying, God, I need something. I, God, I want something for next year. God, I, I just, I said, I'm just, I just want something. I want you to do something. And, and, and I was reading the 2 Timothy chapter 2. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, one of my favorite verses, uh, I just popped into my mind. The Bible says, and think that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. The same commit thou to faithful men. And the word commit just kind of grew off the page. God said, do you see that? And I went, God, I can't miss it. He said, good. And then he said this. He said in 2023 in my prayer life, he said in 2023 as I was praying, I was looking for words. And in my mind I could just, it was almost like God, I, I don't hear voices. I'm not saying I hear voices. So don't go, oh, he's one of them. No, I'm not hearing voices. It was a lot louder than that. Yes, sir. God said in 2023, commit it, thou must be. In 2023, committed thou must be. Now he wasn't, I'm, I'm talking to you, but he was talking to me. But I think if it works for me, and it's fitting for me, and you know, I, I got real serious about it, and I looked up the word committed in the word of God, and I studied every word for the next two or three days. I studied every place the word commit was used. The Bible says, I would seek unto God, and unto God would I commit my cause in Job chapter 5. In Psalm 37, 5, he says, Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. In Proverbs 16, 3, the Bible says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. God wants us committed to him. The first person I thought of was what I'm going to talk about this morning. I believe that we ought to be committed to the Savior. We ought to be committed to the Savior. Here, the psalmist says this, Oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints. For the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. May I say this morning, I believe that you and I are to commit to Jesus. And we ought to do so with passion. We ought to do so with real passion. I'm talking about uh, that, that word passion means any powerful, compelling, uh, a powerful, compelling emotion and feeling of love and, and strong amorous uh, that, 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 that moves us to action. Listen, a, a commitment to Jesus. I commit to Jesus. Listen, with passion. We ought to be committed to the Savior. Committed, number one, we ought to be committed with passion. And the psalmist says, oh! Every time he, I, I, I circle in my Bible, as I go through my, my King James Bible, not the one he used, <laughs> the one I used. I go through my King James Bible. You miss it in Sunday school. You're looking at me and going, oh, what are you talking about? You just missed Sunday school. Uh, you can't get it. It's too late. <laughs> Should have showed up at 9.30. I got here at 5 of nine, five after 5 of 9 so that I can get a parking spot. I'm parked right up at the front. Amen. Come a little early, you get a better parking spot. Amen. Now somebody's going to park in that spot tonight and try to beat me, but I'll be here early. Because you all start at 6.15, and I'm thinking 6 o'clock, so I'll be here at 5.30, and I'll just be sitting down parking lot going, well, I've got the front row spot, but ain't nobody here. But in my Bible, I have circled every place in the Word of God as I've read through it where the letter O is. Because God, listen, I'm going to see, sometimes we read our Bible and, and we don't read it right. You don't read it with any expression. And you, okay, put my little check in the box and, and you miss it. But when you see that word over oh, there, God is trying to get your attention. God wants you to stop and go, hey, when you read it, don't go, oh. You, don't, don't, don't read it. Don't go, oh. Love the Lord, all my saints. Oh, love, oh, love the Lord, all you saints. You got to read it like this. Oh! Love the Lord. Oh, he is saying, oh, love the Lord. Oh, love the Lord. Oh, ye his saints. Then he tells us why. For the Lord preserveth the faithful and 
comfortably reward as a proud doer. Can I say, I commit to Jesus. And we will to commit, be committed to the Savior. I commit to the Savior. I do so with passion, this strong, intense feeling. Oh, love the Lord. All ye his saints. The Bible says in Mount Mark chapter 12 and verse 30, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. How? With all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. Why? This is the first commandment. Hey, listen, God says, I want you to love me. He says, I command you to love me. I'm worthy to be loved. Yes. yes. Say, preacher, we're having a missions conference. No, we're not. We're having a revival meeting. We're going to talk about getting people saved. Good. But if you don't love Jesus, you ain't going to be involved. Because it's not about starting churches. That's the byproduct of his love for God. He's following God's command. But it's the byproduct of a love for God that he has. It's a byproduct that you have a church here. It's a byproduct of His love for God. It's a byproduct of the love of God that He's going to Africa. Just a byproduct of the love of God. It's a byproduct of the love of God that this dear brother, Kurt, right? Goes so It's a byproduct of the love of God. She doesn't do what she's doing. What she's doing, it. she's not doing it because she's commanded to do it. She's doing it as a byproduct of, a, of her love for God, wanting to reach people that cannot hear. Amen. Hey, preach. Oh, God says, love the Lord. Hey. And then he says, thou shalt love the Lord. Thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind and all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Acts, or, uh, Psalm chapter 18 verse 1. The psalmist says, I will love the Lord. My, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Here, let me just read the Bible correctly. <laughs> Psalm 18 1 says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. I will love thee, Oh, Lord, my strength. You know what the psalmist realized? The psalmist realized I've got nothing. I've got no ability. I can't do this alone. Man, I'm a mess. I'm a wreck. I, I've got no, I, I can't even open my eyes. I can't get out of bed. I can't do anything. Oh, I will love the Lord. I will love thee, oh, Lord, my strength. Now I say, John chapter 14, verse 21, the Bible says this. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will manifest myself to him. You know what God promises? God promises that if we'll keep his command and love him, that he'll love us on purpose because we love him on purpose. And he said, and I'll show up where you are when you need me. Hallelujah. Hey, you know how you start 238 churches? When you're a little five foot four Mexican, you know how you start 238 churches? You know how you drill wells in the middle of nowhere that you can't even speak the language? You know how you knock on doors as a policeman and, as, and, and be ridiculed? You know how you do that? You do that based on the love of God and the command of God and God shows up in your midst and helps you and Man. blesses you. And God gives you. I heard him raising tens of thousands of dollars. And I'm going, glory to God. He said, he prays for people and they just send him money. I said, give me their names. I'll pray for them too. <laughs> but what they do is all a byproduct of the love of God they have in their heart. Oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints. Yes. I'm just afraid somewhere this morning. We have forgotten. We're not committed. Listen, we're not committed to the Savior. And if you, if you are, you're committed, number one. You've got to love him. There's got to be a passion. Do what we do because we love the Lord. He could, he could go start 
start a business and raise millions of dollars anywhere he wanted. He was in business. He could go raise millions of dollars anywhere he wanted. This guy can build and do and do all kinds of between him and his wife. They, 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 they could own Frederick. <laughs> he can do anything he wants. He didn't have to do this. They do it because they love God. That's right, Frederick. They do these people love the Lord. They, they do it out of, out of commitment. I didn't mean to leave you out, brother. You started this thing. They, they do it out of, out of, out of, out of, out of passion for the, for the God that saved them. Yeah. Maybe you don't have any passion because they haven't saved you yet. Yeah. Mm. Yes, Preach. Say, so, preacher, we're going to talk about missions. I am talking about mission. The mission is you. The mission is the world. The mission is getting people saved. But well, listen, you don't have to do anything if you don't love it. Just one. You right. one. Can I tell you something? There are some days or there are some like, you, you can get backslid. You can easily get backslid. And that's the times my wife can tell when I'm backslid. My wife can tell when I ain't read my Bible that morning. She'll look at me and she say, God talked to you today yet? I'm like, yeah, why? She goes, that's why. <laughs> I believe this morning we ought to be committed to the Savior. And we ought to commit to Him with passion. You say, why do you love Him? Because He loves me and He helps me and He holds me. I love him because he saved me. He saves me. He saved me. He protects me. He keeps me safe. He, 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 I, I love him because he's so good to me. He, do, he does everything I, I, to me and everything I've ever needed. Listen, he knows all about me. He cares all about me. I, I, I love him because he can do exceeding abundantly above all that I even ask or think. According to the word of God, I love him because he hears and answers my prayers. Can I say our passion for Him. I commit to the Savior with passion. But can I say this morning, if we're committed to the Savior, our commission, our passion, our commitment with passion will be willing to do some things. Let me read you a passage in Scripture. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. The Bible says, What things were gained to me? Paul says, Those I count a loss for Christ, yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb. That means waste in the field. Do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ and be found in Him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Jesus of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know Him, and the power of His resurrection, and the fellowship of His suffering, being made conformable unto His death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained. Either were already perfect. But I follow after. If I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Can I say this morning, I believe that we ought to commit to Christ with passion. Oh, love the Lord, yes. all ye his saints. I will love thee, oh Lord, I'm going to love you. And I'm going to love you. And I believe my passion, my love, my committed passion ought to be willing to get rid of everything for him. My committed passion ought to be willing to get rid of everything for him. May I say this? My committed passion ought to be willing to, to it ought to get ready for entrance to him. He says, yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I suffer the loss of all things, and to count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. He said, I, I want to get rid of everything uh, for him. I want to get ready for entrance to him. I want to get reserved in righteousness, executed by him. I want to get realization enlightened of him. I want to get within reach of eternity because of him. Get real and ensue after him. Listen, he said, I, he, say, he says this in, in, in verse 12, not as though I had already attained, attained either already perfect, but I follow after. Hey, I'm, on, I'm in pursuit. I've got a son who's a deputy sheriff. They've been on calls where they, 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 you've been on calls where you're in pursuit 
of someone that's done something they shouldn't have. Can I tell you something? You and I ought to be in pursuit of God who's done something for us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That he didn't have to. Glory to God. He says, not as though I already attained, neither already perfect, but I follow after. Yeah. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Here's what he was saying. He was saying, my committed passion must be willing to recognize our error of not Knowing him. I must, I wrote, I wrote alongside of that verse in my Bible. I must grab a hold of what's got a hold of me. Yeah. He said, if I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended. He said, hey, uh, God has grabbed a hold of me. I'm just trying to grab a hold of him. Hey. Because I love him. Because of all he's done. Listen, it's caused me to not only want to love him and be commanded to love him and trying to love him, but my passion, my committed passion has caused me to be willing to do some things. Can I say, secondly, I'll move along. I've, I've, got, I've got pages. I, I'll get to it. I, I apologize if, if there's too many pages for you. But let me just say this morning, I believe secondly, I believe secondly, being committed to the Savior, we must, we must commit with passion. Can I say we must commit on purpose or with a purpose? The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. We already read Matthew chapter 12, verse 30, Psalm chapter, and in Psalm chapter 31, verse 23, Oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints. For the Lord preserveth the faithful and plenty the reward of the proud doer. What are you saying? I believe when it talks about, oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, it talks about that thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. I believe God's saying, I want you to, I, I want a commitment to me with purpose. I, I, I want you to love me fully. Yes. I want you to love me fully. When the, when, when the Bible says, you're going to, I, I, thou, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy mind and with all thy strength. That's talking about the inner being and the outer being. The spiritual and the physical. God said, I want it all. That means my, commit, my, my, my commitment to Jesus, my, I'm committed with, 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 with passion. I'm to love him, but I'm to commit with purpose. I'm to, I'm to love him fully. I'm to love him on the inside, and I'm to let that love flow out on the outside. I'm to love him with all I am, and all I have, and all I possess, and all that he's given me. I'm to love him on purpose. I'm to love him fully. Let me just say this. I believe we're to love him faithfully. <coughs> we're to love him faithfully. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1 says this. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or wonder come to pass, wherefore he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You do not understand, every once in a while, people will come into our path. People will come across our path, and, and, and they're nothing like us. And they, they, they've got some weird ideas. I was talking to one uh, yesterday, two days ago, at the, at the information desk, uh, or the, at the motel, when I, as, I, as I witnessed to Jenny, the girl at the counter. She was supposed to be here today. I was hoping she would be. She told me she, would, she was coming. I invited her, gave her a track, gave her, gave her something else, and, and I just, I, I mean, just giving her stuff from your, from your church, so that she had the address. And I was talking about our country and, and the need, and because Jenny asked, she said, "Well, preacher, what do, what do you do?" I said, "Well, I go out and tell folks about Jesus Christ, and I travel all over the country." And she said, "How many years have you been here?" And I said, "I've been coming, I don't know, lots and lots of years. I've been staying in the motel." Thank you very much for allowing me to stay there. And, and it's just because it's, it's close. I, I got three miles to go here, and I go that way to go back to the motel. It's just very simple, and the old man don't get lost. Yeah. In Frederick, Maryland, where you ain't got a straight road nowhere. 
Hallelujah. It's the only place I'm in the Bible. My name's in the Bible. Hallelujah. It's yes, the only right. place I am. So I appreciate where I am, and I, I'm talking to her about all she goes. What do you actually do? <laughs> Glad you asked. Yeah. So I pulled out that little track, and I'm explaining to her what the Bible says yes, about sir. salvation. Yeah. And she looked at me, she says, I did that as a little girl. Oh, hey, praise the Lord. Hey. Yeah. I went, really? I said, tell me about it. And she did. Uh -huh. I'm not going to argue with her. Yeah. But there was another lady at the counter. And she's listening. And then she has some weird ideas. Well, I just think, mm -hmm. I looked at her and I said, but the Lord says, yep. well, I think, and the Lord says, yep. well, I think, mm -hmm. I said, but the Lord says this. And she looked at me and she says, well, you're just an odd kind of a person, aren't you? <laughs> I went, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Amen, preacher. I don't mind being odd. Right. Hey, I might be a nut, but I'm screwed on to the right boat. Amen. 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 Listen, we ought to love him fully. Can I say this? We're to love him faithfully. That's what the prophet was saying here in Deuteronomy 13. He said, look, there's going to come people in and they're going to, and they're going to, and they're going to say something and it's going to take place because the devil is the prince of power of the air. There are some things that he can do that just like God, he's, a, he's the master, imitator, mimicker, and, but, but he's not God. Right. And he said, there are going to be people, and they're going to come in, and they're going to say some things, and it's going to happen, and then they're going to say, let's go over here and smoke a cigarette and drink a beer, let's go over here and worship that God, and that God, and that God, and that God, and forget Jehovah God. Okay. And God said, whatever you do, he said, I do this sometime, I send people in your direction, he said, I'm just trying to figure out, to prove it, do you really love me? Because if you do, you'll never stray from me. You'll be faithful to me. Can I tell you, what all he's done for me, brother, brother, Victoria, what all he's done for me, there's no way in the world I can ever back out on him. He's done so much for so long. For sometimes not even, not even the gratitude from my heart. How can I leave him? How can I not be faithful to him? Well, preacher, why don't you just give a little bit? How can I? How do I do that and still stay right with God? Well, can't you dismiss Sunday night church for a family get together? Sure. And I tell them, I'm getting together with the family. Yes. Amen. Hey. I said they are my family. Right. Man, I tell you what, my dad, my dad and I until until he got saved and knew better, my dad and I used to butt heads. And then one day I realized, and he said, son, he said, you're doing this church stuff, church stuff, church stuff. Family is important. Don't you ever forget it. You know, them attacks. You know, we're, we're, we're attacking. We're getting on. Hey, we're, you know, we're getting on. Hey, family. Yeah. I went. Like, I mean, he said, they're not your family. We're your family. I went, like, dad, my Bible says, that because of the blood of Christ, they're more family than you are. Mm. Uh, amen. My dad is six foot tall. Navy corpsman attached to the six Marines. And my dad is my dad is they called him the moose. Yeah. My dad was a bad dude. My dad was just, I mean, he was lethal. And he, I'm just big, he's tough. He's in heaven now, and you know better now, huh? <laughs> My dad hung his head and just walked away because he had no answer. That's right. He had no answer to that. My dad, a few, about, about a year or two later, got saved. Yes, sir. Amen. And then my dad became very, very faithful to church. Amen. Sunday morning, <laughs> Sunday night, yeah. Wednesday night. That's right. Saturday, they had so many. <laughs> Yep. My dad called it soul saving. Yeah. He said, son, you gonna go out and do some soul saving today? I went, yes, sir. He said, can I go with you? Get a little soul saving in? He said, I ain't never done it. I said, come on. Yeah. I 
got to take my dad, who would cuss me at my car door, soul winning. Yeah. Yeah. Soul saving. I ain't never called a soul winner since this soul saving. Hey. That's what dad said. They made it. And listen, not the first, not the first time. Yeah, the first time we were there, the first couple, four or five doors we knocked on, man, God, 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 God. he says, you put up with that all the time? I said, yeah, welcome to New Jersey, the communist state thereof. Yeah. <laughs> Don't laugh, you live in the communist state of Maryland, you ain't no different. <laughs> About door number eight or nine. We left it, got to the church at 10, left at about 10.15, and at about 11.05, I knocked on the door, and, and, and a man came to the door, and I took my Bible, and I said, if you die right now, do you know for sure you go to heaven or you have some doubt? He said, I'm not, I don't know. Yeah. I said, can I take my Bible and show you what, the, what God says about how to go to heaven? And open my Bible, and this old boy's missing it. And I went through all the verses. He prays and he gets saved. Big old tears in his eyes. I looked over my dad, big old tears in his eyes. Next thing you know, I got big old tears in my eyes. Praise the Lord. Dad got back in the car. He said, I like this. <laughs> I like this. He said, this soul saved. Yeah. <laughs> Can I tell you something this morning? I commit to Jesus. We're supposed to be committed to the Savior. I commit to him with passion. I commit to him with purpose. Listen, to love him fully, to love him faithfully, to love him fearfully. The Bible says you shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and you shall serve him and cleave unto him. I believe I'm supposed to love him fervently. Joshua says this, but take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of, of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave on him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Listen, it ought to be a uh, fervent thing. The Bible says not slothful of business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. I do so. Listen, I come, I'm committed with purpose to love him with following. Deuteronomy says this, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. And then it says, And keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. God says, Keep my charge. Follow, follow. I will follow Jesus anywhere, everywhere. I will follow him. Follow, follow. Are you going to follow Jesus? And I say, if you you will, if you're committed with purpose, you'll you, you'll you'll love him and follow. You'll do so with following. You'll love him fully aware, fully aware of what. Listen, to what the Bible says in Psalm chapter 18. The Bible says, "I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, and my strength, in whom I will trust. My buckler, the horn of my salvation, and my high tower." Hey, God says, "Hey, I just want you to remember. I want you to love. Oh, and I will love the Lord. I will love the O Lord." And he says. He's my strength. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. He's my God. He's my strength. He's my buckler. He's my salvation. He's my high time. He's everything. Hey. Are you excited? Just a teeny bit. I'm so glad I'm saved. I'm so glad he's mine. I'm so glad that I get to love him. I get to love him. I don't have to. I get to. And I made it. Listen. He's not only made it a command and a requirement, but he's made it something that if I want to, I can if I want to. It's a desire, and I don't have to obey him. It's a matter of choice. Yes. You don't have to love him if you don't want to. Just, just go ahead and not love him. I, it'd be better if you did. But yeah. I tell you something, I can't make anybody love God, but you can't tell me I can. I love him fully aware of who he is and what he is and all that he is. Can I say I love him without friction? 1 John chapter 5 says this. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Yeah. That's right. I'm excited about what I get to do. Yeah. I'm excited about where I get to go. I'm excited every time I get in the car. I'm excited about what I get to go through. I, none of this stuff really bothers me. None of this stuff really upsets me. Listen, it's okay. 
I don't want the will of God and the word of God and the, I don't want my love for God to be grievous. Yes. I'm excited about God. I'm excited about the things of God. Yes. I'm excited. Listen. God says, don't get upset. You love me. Don't let it be grievous. If you don't want to love me, you just go ahead. And just, just forget me. But I'm not, I'm not, listen, I don't want to grieve him, but I want to love him. His love is not grievous. I mean, I've never been in a situation where God has not been good to me. Praise the Lord. Even when I have messed up and been stupid and been wicked and been vile, God has always been good to me. God said, I just want you to love me. He said, and, and, and I want you to love me. And his love don't have to be grievous. I do so on purpose. Can, can I just say, <clears throat> I thank God that I get to love him. I love him with, I love him, I'm committed to him with purpose. I'm committed to him with passion. Let me just give you one more and, and I get out of the way. We'll, we'll give an invitation and we'll get out of the way. Can I say this morning, I, I, I'm committed to him with praise. Uh, we ought to be committed to him with praise. Yeah. Uh, listen, I think we ought to be able to shout and shout and, 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 and cheer and be excited. The yeah. Bible says, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Can I say that this morning, I believe we ought to be able to speak his praise. The Bible says, and he, appo he, and he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord and to record and to give and to thank and praise the Lord God of Israel. When David set up the, 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 the church and the tabernacle, when David set up that, that first place, he said, I appointed people and ministers before the ark of the Lord and to record. And I said, and there's going to be some there that are, their only job is to thank and praise the Lord God. I believe you ought to speak his praise. The Bible says in Psalm 9, 4, 14, that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. Psalm 22, 22 says this. I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation. Will I praise thee? He says in Psalm 55, 51, 15. Oh, oh Lord, open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Hey, we ought to speak his praise. We ought to speak His praise. Can I say, secondly, not only should we speak His praise, but I think somewhere along the line, we ought to be singing about His praise. I see people to pick up a songbook and they're like, oh, amazing grace. I don't want to sing. I don't like singing. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, Hear ye, kings, give ear, O princes. I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing, pray to the Lord God of Israel. Do you know why we have a song service? Do you know why we have a song book and a song leader and a pianist and an organist and people that play music? So that you and I, do you understand the book of Psalms is, all, is the book of song. It's the book of praise. Yes, sir. We ought to be singing. We ought to have a song in our heart. We ought to sing to the Lord. Listen, we ought to sing His praise. Yes, sir. And praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins He suffered and bled and died. Hey! We ought to sing praise. That's right. Hey. Woo! You say, preacher, you can't sing. I know. But my Bible says make a joyful noise anyway. Hey! I like my singing better than anybody else's anyway. <laughs> The only person singing I like better than mine is my wife's. Okay. Because she can sing. Amen. Ray Hart used to be number two. He's in heaven now, so now I'm number two. Because I was number three. <laughs> and he bowed out, and I stepped in. Yeah. Here's what the psalmist said in Psalm 57 7. He said, My heart is fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. He said in verse 9, I will praise thee, O Lord, amongst the people. I will sing unto thee. Among the nations. Yeah. Can I say we're to, we're to speak his praise? I believe if we're committed to him, we ought to be committed, but we ought to speak his praise, we ought to sing his praise. Now, I've got a dozen other verses I'm just going to skip them. Can I say this? We ought to shout his praise. Yeah. So, what are you talking about, preacher? Here's what the Bible says in Psalm 511. But let all those that put their trust in, 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 in thee rejoice, let them ever shout yeah. for joy. Yeah. Because thou defendest them, let them also that love thy name be joyful yes. in thee. We're to shout and be joyful. 
Amen. Hang on. Because you say, oh, I just one verse, preacher. Okay. Psalm chapter 32, verse 11 says this. Be glad in the Lord. That's something you ought to tell your face. Yeah. <laughs> Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. It's good. He says in Psalm 102, verse 18, this shall be written for the generation to come, and the people which shall be uh, which shall be created shall praise the Lord. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 25. The Bible says in Psalm 47, 1, Oh, clap your hands, all you people, shout yeah. unto God. Yeah. With a voice of triumph. Oh, I know what you're thinking. Preacher, that that's just charismatic. That's just Pentecostal. Bless God, I ain't got a drop of Pentecostal blood in my body. I'm an independent, fundamental, narrow-minded, King James, Bible, and so on. Temperamental. Come on. Baptist preacher. Amen. And bless God, we had it way before anybody else had it. Amen. And I ain't giving it back, and I ain't giving it up. Amen. Amen. Preacher, you just gonna sound like one of them. Hey, I'm gonna sound like one of him. When I get to heaven, he's gonna, you're gonna hear me coming. Hey! Woo! Yes, sir. I'll tell you what, we've got too many people. Listen, we got to commit to Jesus, commit to the Savior. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. we got nobody. I don't see, I don't see church. If we start shouting, they're going to think we're, what they're going to think bad of us. No. Dude, I don't even care. They already think you're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> they already think that. They They see you in church. They saw you Wednesday night. They saw some of us Thursday night. They saw some of us Friday night. We didn't even take Saturday night off. And here we are again, 9 o'clock, pulling in Sunday. Why do people go to church five days a week? When y'all going to take a day off? They see you out here January, first week of January. Snow blizzards, all kind of nonsense. You people are in here singing and shouting. They already think you're nuts. I want to make sure I'm going to clear up all the doubt. Yeah. yeah. I don't want there to be any doubt that I'm his and he's mine right. and that I'm excited about it. And that you said, preacher, they're going to call you names. They already do. Come on. I'm just going to give them something to call me. Yeah. Amen. I believe we ought to speak His praise. I believe we ought to sing His praise. I believe we ought to shout His praise. Now, can I say this? I believe you ought to serve with praise. The Bible says this in 2 Chronicles chapter 8, verse 14. He, David, according to the... And he, Solomon, this is according to the order of David, his father, the courses... Uh, uh, to order, according to the order of his father, the courses of the priest to their service and the Levites to their charges to praise... And minister before the priest as the duty of every day required the porters also by their courses at every gate. For so had David the man of God commanded. Listen, God used, used David to set up the way the service, the order of the service. He said, but there from every place, he put them in their charge. That means he gave them a position. He gave them a post. He says, to praise and minister. You know, you don't just praise and not minister. You praise and minister. You don't just minister and not praise. And listen, I know a lot of guys that shout, Wah! and don't do nothing. Yeah. I know a lot of guys that, 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 that serve, and they're like, my mouth is shallow. Yeah. I've been asked in some churches to calm down. They don't even let me come back anymore. That's okay. God has filled me with a bunch of other crazy people. Amen. Not just like me. Here's what God said. David said, no, I want you to praise and minister. preachers. Didn't have any sense. We were serving. Didn't get no sleep. We served and shouted. Served and shouted. Served and shouted. We just, Man. Some of us just never quit. There are some of our brothers that did. They just kind of bailed out. Or they got they got two of them. 
know, I got my doctor's degree. Yeah. I got my PhD. Uh -huh. Yeah. Post hole digger. Yeah. <laughs> or pile higher and deeper. <laughs> I'm working on one. It'd be all right. But you know what? I, I, I hope I, know, I don't ever want to lose my shout. Yeah. Can I say tonight? And I'm done. We ought to be committed to the Savior. We ought to be committed because of His passion. We ought to be committed to Him not without, with passion. We ought to be committed to Him with praise. We ought to be committed to Him with, 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 with purpose. Can I say this? We ought to be committed to Him because of the great pardon that we receive. Yes, sir. Because of the great pardon. I'm going to quit because I'm looking at the time. And I know people have to, there's a schedule we have to keep. I've got ten other points. We'll, 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 we'll do them another time. They just give me two other sermons I get to preach to you another day. Because of his pardon. We just celebrated Easter. I don't like calling it Easter. I like calling it resurrection. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Come on. I, I, I know Easter is used in the Bible, but it's not used in the sense that that's you right. think right. it is. Yeah. Right. Because that's something from the page. Uh, that right. That don't get mad. It's resurrection. That's right. Come on. But you understand, my friends, when Jesus was on, Jesus went to the cross silently. The Bible says that the lamb before his shears was dumb in Isaiah, he opened not his mouth. He was willing to take all of our sin and all of our pain and all of our problems, all of it on him. And he took all of our sin on the cross and he gave us, he took all of our sin and gave us all of his righteousness the moment we got saved. And you know, my friends, his pardon. I'm committed to him because of his part. Because of what he did for me the day I got saved. In January, Tuesday night in January, the second, sun, the second Tuesday night of the month in a revival meeting, I got saved. Yeah. At the Park Bible Baptist Church in Pennsville, New Jersey, where you can't go today and probably hear a gospel message and get saved. I got saved there. 1974. Right. 39, 39 years ago. 49 years ago. Next year will be 50 years, I'll be saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. Man, what a God. Yeah. And I remember reading just the other day about the thieves on the cross. One on one side, one on the other side. I don't know which side they were on. They couldn't do anything. They were there because of their sin. He was there because of my sin. Yeah. And on the cross, one of them realized and said, Father, he said, Lord, remember me when thou cometh into thy kingdom. He called him Lord. He didn't say, hey, you. He said, Lord, he, he, he recognized yeah. him as Jesus. Yeah. He said, Lord, remember me when thou comes into thy kingdom. And Jesus said, today. Yeah. That's you, good. you ain't got to do nothing for salvation. Except look at, the Bible says we sing that song, look and live. He looked over and says, Lord, remember me when thou comes into thy kingdom. Today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. When he was on the cross, I was on his mind. He knew me, yet he loved me. He whose glory makes the heaven shine. So unworthy of such mercy. Yes. Yet when he was on the cross, you and I were on his mind. Yeah, that's right, man. What are you going to do with it today? What are you going to do with it today? Will you accept his free gift of salvation <laughs> for us this morning? Will you? The Bible says we're all sinners. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but, man, God butts in just in time. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. Our Lord. God wants to give you a gift this morning. So what's that gift? He wants to give you the gift of salvation. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All you, he holds the gift out. All you've got to do is hold your hands out and say, God, can I have that? So how do I get it? You're simply asking for it. So thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Look at me, and I'm finished. Will you trust him this morning? 
He has a gift for you. It's got your name on it. So how do you know that, preacher? Because the Bible says he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. <coughs> he's not willing that any should perish. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve salvation. I deserve to be. I deserve to be. I, I deserve to be thrown in hell. My back broke, burning like an Italian sausage. I deserve hell. I know what I deserve. And God said, "I know what you deserve." And I died on a cross. And I shed my blood. And three days later, I rose from the grave. And I conquered sin and death and hell just in one blood. He says, "So that I could give you." The greatest gift you could ever, and I paid for the greatest gift anybody could ever receive, the gift of salvation. Amen. Every Christmas, I buy my grandchildren. You've got your, some of your grandchildren here. Every Christmas, I buy my grandchildren Christmas gifts. Every year, usually, Chris, sometimes Christmas Eve, sometimes Christmas Day, sometimes the next day when they, the different family members just go all over. Now, all the Christmas gifts have my grandchildren's names on them. I mean, there'll be a little pile here, a little pile here, a little pile here, and it'll say, you know, uh, Brandon and Bryce and Leia, and, and just all that. I can't name them all, but I forget them all. I've got ten of them. There, there's a whole bunch of them. God knows who they are. My wife knows who they are. Praise Lord. Brother Kurt. Not one time after we read the Lord's, after we read the, the you know the, the Christmas story in the in the Word of God, not one present, not one present is ever left unopened under the tree. <laughs> not one. Matter of fact, they're hunting up under there, looking for any more under the couch, any more here. They're looking, they're making sure I got them off. <laughs> and yet, some of you this morning, listen to me, and I'm done. I'm going to leave here. With God's gift of salvation unopened and unreceived, still sitting, waiting for you. And you're going to leave here lost and undone without God. Lost. It's almost like spitting in God's face, saying, I don't need. Father, would you help us this morning? Father, would you bless your people today? God, would you save the lost in here this morning? Father, I, I, I just sense there's lost people in here this morning. Lord, as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, it, it, it's time to do what's right. It's time to make a commitment to the Savior to come to Him today and take that gift of salvation that He offers so freely. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For whosoever, for whosoever will may come.